I've been doing this for a long time, since my early 20s. And I started as a student at the University of Amsterdam, where I was studying political science. And at some point I had this realization that this was not going to be interesting me for the, re for the rest of my life. Um, quite soon thereafter, I found a book on Islamic geometric design. And um, I loved it, I thought it was really interesting. It appeals to me to such an extent that it, it offers different things, it's never boring. You know, it's art, it's science, it's creativity. So that was that. For centuries, this was a really vibrant design tradition with innovation and new things being made. That's not the case anymore. You know, it's really stagnant, basically. So if I can make a contribution to teaching people how to make these patterns rather than just copying them or tracing them, you know, then, then I'm happy. Cartwright Hall has a lot of nice stuff. Um, I am both on display and, and downstairs not on display. I think the, the Egyptian fabric it's a simple but nicely done geometric pattern and it's combined with calligraphy and other motifs so it represents all these elements of Islamic visual culture in, in, in one piece. It's interesting to imagine how this was once made. You know, someone sat in Cairo stitching this all together and now, and now it's here. Some of the best Jali screens use lots of geometric patterns in one big composition that it's almost like a visual source book. And some of the best screens are enormous and they'll have 30 or 40 different geometrical compositions. And I love that idea because it's like having a book with lots of pictures except it's all on one, in one composition and you, can, and you can look at it in one gaze. And they also have this function that they create a sort of semi-transparent barrier between inside and outside. And they have a a practical function but also you know something a bit more symbolical I suppose so I was very happy to uh, have those in the same space as, uh, as my work of course the, the piece that I made is called uh, I've called it a giant jolly screen if you have a big space you need to do something with visual impact otherwise it just gets lost um, so that was the challenge that I set myself and, and with the screens I mean the interesting story with the with the big jolly screen which is you know going to be, stay here in the museum is that those screens were made in, in Texas by a friend of mine who learned how to make these patterns because he bought my book and when the exhibition was finished he didn't want to take them back to Texas and also he wanted to give them to me as a present as a sort of thank you because he benefited from my book. When the opportunity for the commission came along I thought that's great you know I'll use Raheem's screens. It happened painted here I had a local carpenter make the, the wooden structure to contain the screens. So I wanted it to be really colourful and glossy to make it look like, um, well, to make it look contemporary, but to make it almost look not plastic, but sort of the glossiness and colour of a, a sweetie, basically. That's what I was going for. And I, I wanted to do something that was, had a maximum visual impact. And now, I mean, I'm interested in doing something that will. Hopefully, people will do a, do a second take. You know, if they, firstly, that they recognize it, that's oh, you know, something from Islamic geometric design. But at the same time, also see that it's different, and you know, color is one way to do that. And, and then the neon star. Well, designing it was easy because I can I, I can draw that design without any without any trouble. Um, I just had to draw it full scale on the computer, and then send that file to uh, Neon Workshop in, uh, in Wakefield. Ten, because it's a 10-pointed star, I wanted 10 different colors. Um, and the challenge then for the people who make these neon compositions is how do we do that in a efficient and clever way. So I've been sort of playing around with the idea of, you know, wouldn't it be great to make something in neon? And, 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 and so I did. I'm especially interested in making it look contemporary. No, I mean, I, lo I love that it's a traditional design heritage, but it lends itself so well for contemporary interpretation. You know, I mean, I would hope that some of the things that are on display here, you know, you, people will recognize them as being part of the Islamic geometric design heritage, but at the same time, they look as if they were made in the 21st century. That's what it's all about for me, to get people to see something familiar, but in a new context and to give it some sort of boldness.